From the Journal of Aframus Long Journey, Pilgrim, with notes by Avos Thor, scholar of Reeve Library. Tres day, thirteenth cycle, seventh year, eighty-first turn. I feel like a bit of a fool now. I was supposed to be looking for a rock that looked like a face. However, I was looking for a burrow face instead of a troll's. It was obvious in hindsight, but I didn't realize it until I'd been leaning against the rock in question. Once I found that landmark, I was able to find the Hermit's Hill very quickly. By mid-morning, I had found the cottage. An old troll was sitting on a wooden chair by the door. He introduced himself as Twisthorn. Twisthorn is an interesting person. He is the largest troll I've ever seen. If age hadn't bent his back, I think he would be taller than I am. One of his horns is straight from his head, as was Grotmore's, but the other has a sharp bend halfway, pointing it forward. I believe that was how he got his name. I felt it was impolite to ask. He seemed slightly surprised to see me. I think he was expecting company from someone else. He was most accommodating, however, and invited me in for tea. Note, this would make Twisthorn one of the largest trolls in that part of the world. It is likely that he was from the northern mountains, where trolls grow larger. It is strange that he had taken up with the civilized goat herds, but it's not entirely unheard of. Twisthorn's home is a strange building. It is not made of stone or clay, as other buildings I've seen. Instead, it's made of wood from trees. There aren't many trees in the far downs, so he must have gone far afield to gather enough wood for its construction. Its roof is made from cut grasses, made into what Twisthorn calls thatch. There are windows made of glass in the walls, which seem out of place in such a modest building. In Narlifron, few people can afford more than one or two glass windows. I have heard it is much the same in other cities. Twisthorn's home has ten of various sizes and shapes. At least, I think it has ten. I only counted seven on the outside. But I can see ten inside. They range from a small square window as large as my hand to a large star-shaped window high in the north wall. The inside is oddly cluttered. There are strange bottles, jars, and other containers on shelves with papers scattered around them. There are several chairs and two beds, only one of which has been slept in. He owns many books, certainly more than a hundred, and wrote many of them himself. Chests and boxes occupy every bit of space not taken up by furniture, with just enough space left over to move around. There is also a large writing desk, where I am sitting now. We drank tea flavored with odd spices, while I told Twisthorn why I was traveling. He thinks that he can help me, but explained that he needed to look at something first. He left, asking me to watch his cabin overnight. He showed me how to work his stove, and invited me to try more of his tea. There is a pump over a basin, so he does not need to go outside for his water, or store it in jars. This is a change from the desert, where water is scarce and must be rationed carefully. He said that I could sleep in his spare bed, but I believe I will be more comfortable on the ground. I have never slept on a bed before, and it seems that it wouldn't feel natural to sleep raised above the earth. While a good bedroll is helpful, especially when the ground is damp, a bed seems too high. Note. 
it may seem strange that the hermit was so willing to entrust his home to a complete stranger. But borrow nomads are noted far and wide for their honesty. There have been only a few thieves among the nomads, and they have all been outcasts of one sort or another. Theft simply isn't tolerated in their culture. I wonder what it is that Twisthorn had to see to, and what it has to do with my quest. Still, he seems to know what he's talking about, and he has obviously travelled widely. I await his return. <laughs>